review of trade management for various strategies. Now, this was a question that came in via email this morning from John. And John says, uh, if I have a 45-day credit spread and it's already near 100% loss in the first few days, do I take the loss and close the trade or give it another week or two for a possible reversal? What would be the pros and cons for closing early or waiting a few more days or a few more weeks? Should I consider adjustments? When would be the best time and so forth? Okay, so we've got a credit spread position that's near full loss and we still have time on the trade. Our general approach for any calendar spread, credit spread, bull puts or bear calls, debit spreads, even iron condors, iron butterflies, even buying calls, we typically want to close the position for no more than 50% of the maximum loss that can be occurred. We typically accomplish this by setting an alert. If the stock reaches within 1% of the sold option strike price before it goes in the money, we may start looking to manage the position to roll or adjust the trade if the technicals we use to enter the position shift. So if I entered a bull put credit spread, I might have been looking for a stock that was trading above the 20 or 50 day SMA or 20 or 50 day EMA, whatever you prefer to use. I might have looked for a positive MACD. Well, if the stock drops below the 20 day moving average or EMA, if the MACD shows a negative crossover, then I can see that weakness is starting to appear. I might not be at the 1% rule. I might not be at 50% loss yet, but I'm going to start planning to take action because it looks like the position is reversing in the opposite direction to the sentiment of my trade. And of course, I'm never going to trade a credit spread or a debit spread that could realize 100% loss or an iron condor going into an earnings event. That's just me personally. I do have customers that trade iron condors around earnings and diagonal calendar spreads around earnings. I just don't like to take the chance of the sun at an unexpected 33% drop or 20% upward movement in the stock or 15% upward movement that takes the position to a full loss from an unknown surprise. And so that's just me personally, a little bit more conservative in that case. But we know this can happen. We know the unexpected can happen even without earnings. Suddenly a position can just get away from you. Before you know it, you're at 75, 80% loss. But we still have time. We're at or near the full loss on the spread with time remaining, 15 days, 20 days, maybe even 30 days. We are already near loss. What is the harm at this point in waiting to see if there is a recovery? Now, we shouldn't be expecting to see the position turn to a profit, but taking a 75% loss, a 60% loss, or maybe get back to a 50% loss definitely is going to beat that 90 to 100% loss. Instead of wiping out eight or nine previous wins in a high probability credit spread structure, we get back to that 60 or 50% loss. We might only be wiping out four or five previous trades. But that being said, my thoughts on the direct comparison, pros and cons. Closing the spread early for a loss, the pros. We free up the capital, the margin requirement that you had to cover that credit spread position to use for other trades to try to get back to profitability over time. You also free up peace of mind. It's no longer there. There's no longer the loser in your portfolio. Just move on and look to make it back with your trading plan and what has worked before. Also, you're not holding and hoping for a recovery, watching the stock movement every day, trying to see if you're getting any kind of signal that it's going to reverse, that it's going to move up, waiting and hoping for good news. It's just out of your mind, out of your head, and out of your portfolio. The con, of course, is you realize the full loss right away or close to it. Naturally, this may take longer to make back. You probably wiped out eight or 10 previous wins by closing the position out. What about leaving the position open right now? Still have 20, 30 days to go, maybe to expiration. We're near full loss. What are the pros of leaving it open? Well, a losing trade could be closed for less of a loss later on if you do see the reversal. You might see a miracle recovery, but don't expect it. But that also depends on the individual situation, how far gone the position is. I should say how deep in the money the bull put or the bear call is at this point. Proper position sizing is key in any of these strategies. When you enter the trade, you should have been structured so that where you were comfortable, not hoping to, but comfortable in the portfolio, losing the full amount. In other words, a credit spread position for me personally does not represent usually more than 5 or 6% of the total portfolio value. 
I may have three credit spreads open, three or four credit spreads open at a time using around 15% of the total portfolio value. So even if all three go against me and I close them for that 50% target loss, my portfolio is only down 7.5%. The cons of leaving the position open is number one, well, dead money is sitting out there. You don't have the peace of mind and you're still holding and hoping for a recovery. But then you also take the risk of early assignment with the deep in the money options, even though they might be 30 to 20 days away, and that would lock in the full loss of the position at 100% because your broker would likely exercise your long option to deliver the short obligation at early assignment, and you'd have the full 100% loss of the initial trade entry. Now, adjustments and when to adjust. Realizing near full loss on a credit spread or a debit spread, iron condor, is almost impossible to adjust. Think about it this way, 30 to 40 day out trade, maybe you took in a 45 cent net credit on a $2.50 spread. That's roughly a 22% return in 45 days. But the true max loss would only be 205. You keep the 45 cents regardless of what happens. Even if you take early assignment, close out for 250, you've only lost 205 in the position. But that's close to five times the initial net credit using the range out of the money and the probability you wanted. To make back that 205 or close to that full loss of 205, you're going to have to go further out in time, 90, 120, 180 days. And a lot can happen as market conditions have shown in the last year and a half. You're going to have to increase the strike difference to try to get that monetary value back. I can't still do a two-point spread and expect to get a 205 net credit or a 250 spread and expect to get a 205 net credit, even if I'm right at the money. That's going to be tough. So I'm going to have to go to a five, likely a 10, maybe a 15 point spread, which is going to do what? Increase the margin and increase the maximum risk if the stock continues to move against you. And, or what I mean by and is sometimes you increase the strike difference, you still don't get it. So you're going to have to increase the strike difference, go further out on time and increase the number of contracts. I originally did five. I need to make back, uh, what is that, $1,025 that I took on the full loss. I may have to go out in time, widen the strikes, and move from five contract trade to 10 contract trade, which again is going to mean higher risk and higher potential loss just to get back to break even in that case. When to look to close or adjust. As I mentioned, what we prefer to do with the credit spread positions, debit spreads as well, if they're in the money, is we're going to set alert that if the stock reaches within 1% of the sold option strike price, we're going to look to take action. What does that mean? Well, here's a married put, a bull put, my apologies. Here is a bull put credit spread that was found right before the webinar started for uh, Sting, STNG, Scorpion Tankers. And the stock, as you can see, is trading at 61.26. I could sell a 10th of March 55 put for 58 cents and buy the 53 for 33 cents. We've got a 25 cent net credit on a two point spread, 14.3% return. 1% rule. This is my pivot. This is my sold put option in this case. You see, we're deep out of the money. So I'm going to have a concern if the stock starts to move down to here. So the 1% rule. If the stock drops to 55.55, I'm probably looking to take action. What might that be? Well, it's one of the eight ways we might look to manage a credit spread. I might just roll down the short put. Um, I might uh, close this position and move the whole put down, close and roll out. I might close and do the opposite if my sentiment has changed. There's a full video on the eight ways to manage the condition, but that's the 1% rule, 1% of your sold option strike price. If we did a bear call credit spread on Sting, uh, Scorpion Tankers, and let's say I sold the 70 in that case and bought the 72 or the 72.50, my 1% rule would be 70 cents below this price where I don't want it to go. So if the stock reached up to 69.70, I'd be looking to adjust the position. That's the 1% rule and that usually allows us to close the position for half of the expected maximum risk, but it also depends on the situation. If we would enter this trade today and Monday morning 
Sting suddenly gaps down and opens at 55.65. Well, the liquidation value on this is probably going to be a little bit more than the 50% loss. It depends on the situation, but usually as it starts moving down and moving down over time, as it starts to get to that value, we're going to look to close the position or adjust it. Looking at the technicals, here's the chart that I typically have here. This is the SMA20. The Bollinger Bands are up here and down there, I should say, the two Bollinger Bands. And then I like to use the MACD sort of crossover lines. If I'm doing a bull put, the stock's definitely going to be above the SMA20, and we're definitely going to have a positive MACD. As you can see, there's been some hesitation on this stock, and it's pulled back. Well, if in the next five to 10 days I'm in this position, maybe in four to five days, the stock starts to do that, and it crosses below the SMA20, or I start to see a negative MACD crossover, then those two signals, I might want to close the position out at that time because the stock's doing the opposite of what I want for the sentiment of the strategy. Even if I'm not at the 1% rule yet, I might want to consider taking action on that position. And of course, last but not least, I never trade a type of credit spread that could realize 100% loss of the margin invested, even though I'm allocating proper position sizing to this trade in my portfolio but I don't want to do it around earnings for the surprise. I don't want to be guiled into it because of the high premiums and high implied volatility and a better return than other positions. Personally, I just like to avoid the surprise, not do credit spreads um, through an earnings event or an iron condor, for example. And of course, you can do that on the search and power options by making sure all the positions that you're screening for do not have earnings between now and expiration. Now let's talk about the importance of keeping losses in a credit spread structure to 50% or less. We're going to navigate over to radioactivetrading.com. We're going to take a look at the trade simulator tool, which allows us to run comparisons on a trading plan based on return, risk, success rate, a number of trades. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to navigate over to radioactivetrading.com. And at the top here, we're going to click on our Resources tab. And down here, we see the Trade Simulator tool. Let's just go ahead and click on that. Now, this tool is fairly simple, but also extraordinarily powerful. What it's going to do is it's going to allow us to put in a target return for a strategy we're looking for, put in the loss limit that we'd realize on that strategy, probability of loss, so not the probability of wins, the reverse, the probability of loss on our structure. Use a starting amount of capital and how much to invest in each trade. Okay, now say we have some default here. This is essentially a stock version. I'm going to look to close stocks if I make a 10% return. I'm going to put a loss limit at 10%. I'm going to expect a 50% win-loss ratio. Down here below, what the system did is it flipped a coin 100 times. Heads, we win. We make 10%. Tails, we lose. 10%. We allocated 50% of $10,000 into each position. And down below, we see if we are only right 40% of the time, 40 wins, 60 losses. Only had about a 9% return at one point, but disastrous view. Of course, that's an exaggeration for emphasis, but that's what it looks like. We also have some default settings there for uh, the covered call, You know, making 5% if assigned, that's pretty high. You know, 30% win ratio going in the money. And even with a 67% win ratio, controlling losses to 10% with a high 5% return if assigned, well, you see there that over time, even with a 67% win ratio, we're not hitting our targets. Now, I have a default for credit spread, but I'm going to use more along the lines of what we just showed with that weekly bull put search, sort of essentially the pick of the day for the weekly bull puts on the Scorpion position. The return was 14.3%, if I'm not mistaken. Usually the average that we look to target and we have achieved using that bull put structure we like to use is about a 14.8% return. We're going to control losses to 50%. All of the positions in that search are set to be 85% probability of success or higher with positive MACD, as I mentioned, in stocks above the SMA20. We've seen ranges of profitability during certain market years of uh, 83%, 85%, as high as 88%. But let's take the 83% win ratio. 
So that's going to put us at a probability of loss of 17%. Now let's just say we take a $10,000 account, but again, if I'm putting in 10, let's put in 15,000. If I had a $100,000 account, I'd probably only be allocating 15% to bull put credit spreads. So $15,000. And I might have three or four trades on at a given time. So each trade really only represents about 5% of the total portfolio. So let's put in 33.3%. 86% win rate. We never we had two, we had successful wins in a row. Wow. Okay, was that 10 wins in a row? So it almost doubled the account size to start with. You know, $714. Hey, that's 14.3% of the $5,000 that we would have allocated. That's right. And so those wins in a row really gave us a good bump. We never went into negative. And we had an 86% success rate right in the wheelhouse. And over time, you see it can be a huge return. Let's get to, let's see if we can get to like 83. Perfect. Okay. Two wins in a row, then two losses. We do go negative to about 21%. That's not too bad. I've seen a bull put credit spread portfolio drop down to 50% of its value. Oh, this is close, isn't it? I'm sorry, I was reading that wrong. The 7,900 off of 15,000. Yeah, we're near 50% down. And that'll happen. Three losses in a row can happen. One sudden black swan event on your three open trades, close them all out for a 50% loss. And now to take the portfolio down as expected. But over time, even though we had that, that large loss of near 50%, still can be successful. 83% win rate. Let me put lug that in there. 83% win rate. That's what I want. Now, let's change this to 60. Now we're going to have the loss limits to go to 60%, keeping the same target win of 14.3%. It's random every time. But I'm going to try to get to that 83%. There's 82. See, we're at a loss there. On. I'm sorry, can't hard code this. But look, even at 84%, you're making much less of a return. What we just saw with the 50% loss, I believe, was we were up around uh, 29, 32% as the ending, or 32,000, excuse me, as an ending amount, almost double the position. This is still respectable, but it's not where we want. Of course, big loss if we're well below that 80% range. There you go. Okay, 83% winner, 17% losses. Took 15,000. We didn't see as much of a drawdown because it was more spread out. But again, ending amount over time dropped the profit down to only 1,119, allowing the loss limit to go to 75%. Wow. At one point, we had the success rate we wanted. We're up over about 50%. We're up $7,799 in this case to $22,799. Lowest value was about, a, what is that, 66% loss, and that's about where we ended up, down two-thirds of the portfolio by allowing it to go to a 75% loss. Same probability, same starting amount, same allocation. This is why it is imperative for credit spread positions and debit spread positions to keep the loss at just 50% of the max loss because then you can still hit your targets on the trades and in the right market conditions, not every market condition, I'll talk about that in a moment, sorry, trying to get back to 83, but in the right market conditions, you'll find it easy enough following those rules to get close to this 50%, oh, come on, 83, 50% <laughs> loss ratio without exceeding it Every now and then, one will go, but if you keep the average over time to just a 50% loss, there we go, that's what I was talking about. Even with two losses in a row, a lot of wins, but that's what your target should be, is to keep the loss on the credit spreads to 50%. But play around with your numbers, John. Go over to RadioactiveTrading.com, click on that Resources tab, go into the Trade Simulator tool. What is your average return on your winners with the credit spread strategy you've been using? What is your average probability of loss or the reverse of uh, your success rate over time? How much are you allocating to the structure and how many trades are you opening? Plug those numbers in, run your simulations and see what would happen if you toggle the loss limit. And what's a loss limit that helps you get to your goals? Now, remember, if you exaggerate and I say, oh, I'm going to only take 20%. 
for example, of those and say, wow, even if I'm only right 76% of the time, I have a huge profit. Well, 20% of a $2.05 risk is you're going to close the position for $0.40 cents risk, double of what you made. Right? You were looking to make $0.25 cents in my example with a maximum risk of 205 So 20% of that would be about $0.40 cents or so. Okay, $0.41. Cents. You're probably not going to have a 76% success rate if you're closing all your credit spreads once they hit a 40% loss or twice your net credit. You might not even have a 50% success rate in that case. Um, so that's a lot of investors try that, that they set a stop at 2x or 3x, the initial net credit. And it's sound management, but it's much more difficult to keep the win ratio you need to be successful. Uh, let, let's if 50 could probably be successful in this case. Let's just check it out. Probably not, though. But let's say right 50% of the time. Yeah, we're down extensively. It's probably going to be about 63, I think. Ooh. Oh, sorry. See, I get myself with that every time. It's the loss, not the probability of win. Not the success rate. There you go. Yeah, see, so 62%. We're still hitting sort of those targets. Not really. It's only... Okay, it's it's a reasonable strong target, about thirty three percent, thirty percent gain over time. Um, I think, yeah, I thought sixty three was the the one. Yeah, it's six thousand again. But you might not even have that success rate closing those early. Okay, but again, that's how the trade simulator tool can help you with your positions and evaluating is your trading structure that you're using right now going to work for you long time over time with the numbers that you're targeting and the structures that you're using and the stops that you're triggering. But make it make sense. Don't say, oh, if I set it to 20%, and I still keep the 75, 80% success rate, I'm going to be doing gangbusters. You're not going to be able to do that, <laughs> is what I'm trying to emphasize. All right. Now, let's just go back real quick. There we go. And that's the importance there, again, of keeping the losses to 50% or less with these strategies. Now, another question that came in that I just answered via email, didn't need to really be covered, I felt, in depth here, is Anthony, similar question. If you put on a covered call on an existing stock with 21 to 24 days till expiration, would it make sense to close the position after five days if you've hit 60% of profit? So it's the reverse of what we're talking about here. And of course, my answer is in general, what we look for, what you've probably seen on the Power Options Portfolio Tools, we look for the 80-20 rule. If we make 80% of the expected premium in a credit spread, um, the expected premium we sold in a covered call or cash secured naked put, we close it for an 80% profit or higher. We'll take that off the table at that time. But look, in this case, opened a position with 21 to 24 days to expiration, five days you've hit 50, 60% profit. Look, if that return meets your targets, maybe you're looking for a 5% return, you're getting two and a half in five days. If that matches the target for the strategy in your account, after you've evaluated using the trade simulator tool, it most definitely would meet the annualized return targets you have for that structure. There's nothing wrong with taking profits early. You just don't want to take profits early too often or too low because then you're probably not hitting your trading plan targets. Make sure that the closing the position early matches what you want to see for what you set out to do with that strategy in your portfolio. And of course, if that strategy is not working for you, and you're not hitting your targets anyway, then maybe you want to call in for a coaching session with Ernie or myself. We'll talk about the direction you're going, what are your expectations, and maybe ways that we can get closer to that using the tools and power options as well. But it brings up, you know, just another thought here. I promised, you know, other strategies. Covered calls and naked puts. We usually follow the same things that you do. We'll look to maybe add an alert or a stop if the stock falls 7 to 8% from when we open the position. Using the Power Options portfolio tools, I personally don't use hard stops in my broker. I have the alert set on Power Options. Now, this can change based on structure. If I'm doing a deep in the money monthly covered call that's 10% in the money, well, I can allow the stock to probably fall 11 or 12% before I have to consider rolling or I'm at the break even or at a loss because I collected so much intrinsic premium. I was looking for a smaller return and a higher probability, but hey, the trade went against me. I can afford, I have more protection, so I can afford a further decline. But usually, once you see the stock fall 7 to 8%, and even in those strategies, when the technicals change direction, as we mentioned, 
looking at that Scorpion trade and the graph, maybe you want to consider it. Credit spreads, debit spreads, uh, diagonal calendar spread, poor man's covered calls, iron condors, call or put buying. Look to close the position if you're near a 50% loss. The last time I ran a uh, last a couple months ago, no, uh, December, apologize. Um, we did. We had a discussion on call option buying, put option buying. When we ran a poll and said, hey, if those of you that are doing a call or put buying, what is your standard stop? And most of the results come in between the 35, sorry, was it 40? To, yeah, it was 40 to 50. I'm sorry, the 40 to 50% range is what most investors who attended the webinar use for their stops when buying calls and buying puts. Well, Mary puts, well, follow the guidelines in the full course, the blueprint, the full chapter on exiting a radioactive profit machine. Collar positions, look, protection is in place, but you may want to consider adjusting or exiting if the stock falls that 7 or 8%, falls below the break even, uh, well below or closer to the put strike price. Rather than looking to adjust, maybe just take the two, two and a half, three percent loss of maybe the four, five, or six percent loss maximum. Again, fifty percent of the maximum loss, and just get out of the trade. Why readjust a collar or a bullish strategy on a stock you thought was bullish but is now showing you a negative sentiment? It's the same thing with bull puts. A lot of investors say, "Hey, just keep rolling it down, rolling it down and out, rolling it down and out." Why do I want to keep trading a bullish position on a stock that's negative? I might be better off just taking the 50% loss on that trade, looking for other positions using the power options search tool that do match my sentiment and the direction that I want for that strategy in my portfolio, bull or bear in those cases. All right. And of course, other full guidance. Remember what I said? Go to our YouTube channel. Check out the playlist. There's a variety of management ideas in addition to criteria and comparisons. Most of the ones there. Uh, bull put credit spreads, bear call credit spreads, bear put debit spreads, um, call call buying and put buying, um, bull call debit spreads also. You'll see a video for each of those on the seven or eight ways to manage the strategy. Um, you also see ideas on clarifying stops in those strategies, closing outcomes, setting alerts. Um, Similar to the question that was asked by John, we did a presentation a, a year ago I really liked. It was two ways to trade a, trade a strategy. And a gentleman, a regular Power Options user actually, regular attendee to our webinars, brought up a question of, I saw recently someone was doing um, just out of the money, bull put credit spreads, lower probability of the 65 to 75% range, 45 days out in time, and they were going to look to close it in the first two weeks if they hit a 50% profit. Okay. And what we did is we ran the comparison against what they were doing versus our two-week out approach with just doing the trade, holding it as close to expiration as possible, closing it for the 85 or full profit if it expires worthless, 85% uh, profit, I mean, with that 14.8% average return, 50% loss, and 83 85% success rate. And they were almost identical. The, the returns that came out, it wasn't a full in-depth research, but the three or four we looked at over time, it was the same exact or really close return at those times. So why have the extra steps to have to close it and then open new ones 45 days out, close them in 14 days, open 45? There's pros and cons, and we reviewed that, but it was about essentially the same exact risk reward profile, same exact return and success rate when we looked at it. But go to the YouTube channel and Power Options, check out the playlists, check out the spread that interests you, and there you'll see different videos. And of course, on most of these debit and credit spreads we're talking about, you see the seven or eight ways to manage that structure as well. Okay. All right. So that's what I wanted to cover here for John's question about closing a spread that is near full loss, why management might not be the best idea. What are some ideas we might look for to avoid getting into that position in the first place? And of course, further education to help you not get into that situation. And of course, using the trade simulator tool, very important. So it can help you evaluate your trading plan, see if you're hitting your targets over time. Maybe you need to adjust the spread difference a little bit. Maybe you need to adjust the stop. Um, but be realistic with it. We'd all like to see, hey, I'm going to set a stop at 1%, target a 10% return. Well, we'd all love to do that, but in realistic trading, that's not going to work out for us.